ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टुडे रीडिंग फ्रॉम बिलिट एज द सन रीटेलिंग ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो फाइव द यूनिवर्सल ऑर्डर एंड वी स्टार्टेड फर्स्ट चैप्टर ये सुबह किंग प्रेवरतस वंडरस एक्टिविटीज मुकम करो दिवाचलम पंगुम लंग है देखिए यत्कृपा तमं बंदे श्री गुरुम दीनतारिनम परमानंद माधवम श्री चतन्य ईश्वरम हरियों सर So yesterday we finished a reading when Shukadev Goswami was saying that there are two kinds of impediments to devotional service. The first is an offense at the lotus feet of Vaishnav, since Krishna consciousness is eternal. It is never destroyed, but offenses to a devotee may stall one's progress for some time. And the second type of impediment is due to Krishna's desire. And this is what occurred in Priyavrat's case. Now, Rikshit Maharaj has been hearing this from Shukadev Goswami and Shukadev Swami. Goswami is going to continue there from there. Verse 6. Priyavrat's teacher pulled him aside. Your studies are complete. Tomorrow your father's chief minister will come to take you home. As the eldest son... You must prepare to inherit your father's kingdom. Priyavrata raised his eyebrows, but I wish to continue with my studies of the Vedas. His teacher walked away. The matter is settled. This is the emperor's command. Have your belongings packed up by tomorrow noon. That night, Priyavrata crept into his younger brother's room, Uttanpad. Uttanpad, Uttanpad, wake up. Uttanpad sat up. What is it? Is there any danger? Shh! You'll wake everyone up. There is no danger. I just wanted to let you know I'm leaving. Uttanpad looked around the dark room, noting the soft snoring of his roommates. In the middle of the night, has the chief minister arrived? No, whispered Priyavrata. I am not going home. I am leaving for Narad Muni's ashram. So obviously Priyavrata and Uttanpad both are at the Gurukul. And now since Priyavrata has heard the orders of his father, the emperor, he doesn't want to have a break in his studies from the Vedas, so he is leaving for Narad Muni's ashram and he is telling his younger brother Uttanpad. Tell father I renounce my claim to the throne, I wish to instate you instead. Me? You want me to be the king? How is that possible? I am your younger brother. Don't argue. I must leave now before you wake someone up. If anyone asks you where I am, Say you know nothing. Only give this message to Father's minister that will give me a chance to get away without being caught. Very well, dear brother. You are like my guru. I will do as you say. Obviously, these, these conversations are from a different era. So we can see what kind of respect they had for each other. Priyavrat slipped silently into the night. He walked away for many days through forests until he reached Gandhamadana mountain. He asked local hermits the whereabouts of Narad's ashram, subsisting only on roots and berries. He was emaciated when he finally found Narad. Falling flat before him, Prayavrata spoke tearfully. O oh, Holy One, I take shelter of you. Kindly accept me as your disciple and train me in self-realization, Narad said. 
sorry, Narad had frequently visited Brahmin schools and he immediately recognized the prince. He agreed to instruct Priyavrata in the techniques of pranayama and meditation on Krishna. By these practices, coupled with strict celibacy and study of scripture, Priyavrata gradually attained an advanced level of spiritual realization. He increasingly delighted in discussing Krishna with his spiritual master. When Narad was away, Priyavrata absorbed himself in chanting Krishna's holy names. He did not like to divert his attention away from Krishna. The years passed and many generations of Uttanpad's descendants came and went. When the Pracheta princes retired, their only son Daksha declined to become the emperor. This is that this Daksha was Parvati's father in the previous life. And this is his another birth when he came as the sons of, son of the Prachetas, the hundred sons. Determined to practice ascetism, he left for the forest. The kingdom's ministers and Brahmins went to Swambhuva, who was living in retirement. O oh Lord, there is no king. Kindly find a solution. Now Swambhuva Manu is the, sorry, Swambhuva is the father of Priyavrata and Uttanpath. The kingdom's ministers and Brahmins went to Swambhuva, who was living in retirement. O oh Lord, there is no king. Kindly find a solution. Swambhuva meditated and prayed for many days, seeking inspiration from Krishna. Finally, the thought came to him to go to Narad's ashram in Gandhamadana and summon his eldest son, Priyavrat. He alone was fit to take charge of the earth. He ordered his charioteer to prepare his fastest horses. horses and to equip his chariot with all provisions for the arduous trek. They departed the next day after many days travel. He came to Narad's ashram. The area was delightful with varieties of fruit-bearing trees everywhere, their colorful blossoms filling the air with a heady fragrance. The calls of the cuckoos and doves created enchanting melodies and deer tigers and other wild animals ambled at their ease, exuding an aura of serenity. From a distance, Swambhuva saw his son dressed in deer skin with matted locks. He sat with Narad, absorbed in conversation. Alighting from his chariot, Swambhuva hurried towards them. Prevrata, my son, seeing his elder father, Elderly father approaching, Priyavrata rose quickly. Father, what brings you here? I hope all is well. We need you, son. It is urgent. Please, said father, you must be tired, hungry and thirsty. He offered his father a straw mat. Narad spoke amiably with Swambhuva while Priyavrata fetched a clay pitcher of clear spring water and a leaf platter of forest fruits and berries. Narad motioned for him to sit next to him. My dear boy, your father wants you to return with him and take over the rulership of the kingdom. Priyavrata's eyes grew wide. Me, I have taken a vow of celibacy and service to my guru, Verizutanpad. Swambhuva shook his head. He has long passed away and his illustrious line has ended. There is no alternative. You must return. How can I assume the throne? I desire nothing else than to absorb my mind and senses in Krishna's service. It's not about what you or I want, replied Swambhuva. It's about what is necessary for the world's welfare. Without a powerful and pious ruler, the people will suffer. You must return. You are duty-bound to obey your father. Priyavata's mouth 
dropped open. He glanced at his spiritual master, that is Narad, who looked at him with compassion, summoning his courage, he turned back to his father. One must obey the father's order, yet is not one's personal salvation the, help, the highest glory. Swambhuva's features softened. It is good that you are considering what is your highest duty. Know from me it is to execute the order of higher authority. The highest authority in the material world is Lord Brahma. He ordered me to beget qualified children to rule the world in pursuance of the principles of devotional service to Krishna. As my son, it is your duty to continue my line. Hear from me how Brahma once instructed me, one who is beyond the limit of envy and who is sane, accepts the order of his father with great delight and execute, executes it to his full capacity. Priyavrata looked down and swallowed hard. After a few moments, he raised his head. Father, forgive me, but did not your elder brothers, the four Kumars, decline to marry and have children when asked by Lord Brahma? I have heard from my spiritual master that to save one's own soul is the highest religious principle. To save the family, abandon a man. To save the village, abandon a family. To save the country, abandon a village. To save the soul, abandon the earth. If I stay serving my spiritual master, I feel certain that I will one day attain Krishna's association. But if I come back with you, marry and rule the world, I fear I will again fall into illusion. Therefore, I must respectfully de decline your order, just as the four Kumar brothers declined Lord Brahma's order. So Kumar brothers were also the sons of Lord Brahma. And Swambhuva, that is Priyavrata's father, he was the younger brother, the younger son younger to the Kumaras. And as we know, Narad is also Brahma's son, born of his mind. If I stay serving my spiritual master, I feel certain I will one day attain Krishna's association. But if I come back with you, marry and rule the world, I fear I will again fall into illusion. Therefore, I must respectfully decline your order, just as the four Kumara brothers declined Lord Brahma's order. Swambhuva scowled. He turned to Narad, great sage, please tell him he must come with me. Narad shrugged. I cannot see the flaw in his reasoning, my dear Manu. So this is Swambhuva Manu, obviously. And Narad is also telling him the same thing as uh, Priyavrat. The son has told his father, Swambhuva Manu. Swambhuva held his head in his hands. What was he to do now? Verse 7, as the three men sat in silence, Narad noticed an effulgence rising in the sky. Shielding his eyes, he peered upward and exclaimed, Lord Brahma is coming. Look, he is surrounded by the personified Vedas and his close associates, including Lord Shiva. As Brahma's party drew closer, they could hear the four Vedas chanting. Lord Brahma is the first created being and the most powerful God. He develops the universe and he is born directly from Lord Vishnu. Knowing the purpose of creation, he is dedicated to everyone's welfare. Verse 8, the sky became crowded with hosts of Siddhas, Gandharvas, Sadhyas, Charan, Celestial Sages, and God seated in resplendent airplanes, chanting hymns glorifying Brahma. As he passed through their midst, Brahma shone like the full moon surrounded by bright stars. When Brahma's swan carrier reached Gandhamadana mountain, it approached Prince Priyavata. 
verses 9 to 10. Now it's Brahmava and Priyavrata immediately stood up, holding their palms. They respectfully worshipped Brahma with Vedic mantras. One by one, the three men stepped forward, bowed at Brahma's feet, and garlanded him. Narad then offered him a seat. Priyavrata brought water with which to wash his feet, and Swambhava fanned him with the yak tail. That is the chamar. Narad said, O great lord of the universe, it is rare indeed that you leave the, your abode, Satyalok. Pray tell us the reason for your appearance here. So the lord of the universe here is, is Brahmaji. Now it's Narad. So he's asking him, that uh, you rarely leave your abode, Satyalok. Pray tell us the reason for our appearance here on earth. Verse 11, Brahma turned toward Prayavata, who knelt before him. I am here to instruct this prince, dear child. Kindly hear what I shall tell you. Prayavata sensed Brahma wanted him to obey his father. Swambhu Manu, his body tense, nothing would sway him from his determination to serve his guru. Not even Brahma would break his resolve. Brahma saw the defiance in Prayavata's eyes and sighed. My dear Prevata, do not be jealous of Krishna. Prevata frowned, jealous. Why do you say, why do you think I'm jealous of Krishna? He is my Lord. Brahma said, Krishna is the only controller. If we resent his control and try to unsurf it by acting independently, that amounts to jealousy. So some strong instructions coming from Brahma. Brahma is saying that Krishna is only the controller. If we resent his control and try to unsurf it by acting independently, that amounts to jealousy. I merely want to serve Krishna's representatives, my spiritual master, representative, my spiritual master. Brahma said Krishna wants you to act in another way. We cannot know why, for he is beyond our analysis. All of us, including your spiritual master Nara, your father Manu, myself and even Lord Shiva, must execute Krishna's orders. It does not lie in our power to avert his will. Verse 12, Prayavata folded his palms. Lord, I am inclined to austerity, cultivating transcendental knowledge and mystic meditation. I wish to serve Lord Krishna in these ways. My dear Prince, do not stubbornly avoid Krishna's desire. On the plea of such things, Prayavrata bowed his head. O oh, great one, through you Krishna tells me to rule, but through my preceptor, he tells me to remain detached from the material life. Surely he is giving me a choice. Brahma chuckled. Do not try to subvert the Lord's will by clever arguments. He wants you to do both. So Brahmaji is telling Priyavata that Lord Krishna wants Priyavata to remain detached from the material life and also become an emperor. Priyavata bit his lip both. How was that possible? We have great material opulence. Perhaps we could employ someone to administrate the state. Brahma simply smiled and Priyavrata said, or possibly I could perform civil religious rituals to free myself from all obligations. Brahma remained impassive and Priyavrata looked hopefully at Narad. Maybe this great sage could help me avoid becoming king. No, replied Brahma, you must become the emperor while remaining detached. You cannot defy Krishna's order by the power of religion. Material opulence or any other means, either by yourself or with the help of others, no living being from myself down to the ant can disobey Krishna's command. Verse 13, he beckoned Priyavrata. To sit next to him and the prince came forward. Brahma placed a friendly hand on his grandson's shoulder. My dear Priyavrata, Krishna ordains a specific body for each of us according to our karmic destiny. He gives us freedom to act, but if we defy him, well, we take another material body to continue pursuing our independent desires. In this way, we remain in illusion, experiencing a mixture of fear, distress, and happiness. 
Prerat said, Lord, I desire to obey Krishna's orders, order, but I am confused through my father and my guru. It seems he instructs me in contradictory ways. Verse 14, dear boy, we are all born with a nature which correlates to duties within the Varnashram system. These responsibilities ensure everyone's steady spiritual progress. They are like the rope threading, threaded through the bull's nose by which the master guides the animal. Therefore, every sane person should execute his duties as ordained by Krishna. Prayvata still looked un uncertain. Can I not transcend my royal duties and make more rapid spiritual advancement by remaining a brahmachari? within Varnashram. So we will continue from here onwards next time. This is a, a bit lengthy chapter and lots to take in. So thank you for joining. We will continue our reading from here onwards next time. Hare Krishna.